what is up everyone it is your boy Bri and today we'll be looking at some uh, good old FL Studio hacks um, I have seen a lot of hack videos online which are really helpful but I've never really seen one focused on um, you know the recording process either you know recording vocals or mixing vocals or just mixing or you know handling a project within FL um, I've seen all sorts of cool production related things in terms of creating beats but not so much the other side of it right so you know these are the things that make my life a lot easier with NFL when mixing NFL um, I've just kind of gathered this info over the years by you know maybe clicking the wrong thing here and there and then you know boom you got some some fly uh shortcuts you know so, so yeah let's get into that i've got a list obviously because i can't remember all the stuff off my heart and i'm not going to sit here and make like titles and all that stuff so yeah let's get into it so the first thing is um the quick recording technique which really just makes life a lot easier you know you get into a nice workflow when recording you know the worst thing that um i think can happen while recording is is letting the technology get in the way so this is kind of the quickest way for you to quickly you know enable recording so the first thing obviously is uh you know obviously you need to arm your track which i've already done here so we're just going to be recording silence i uh, just pretend that we are recording something so once you have enabled recording uh it should stay there right if it's not staying there so let's just you know so we're not uh enabled record so if you want to you know every time you end your recording it might stay locked in i don't know how to lock it in but i guess it just kind of stays locked in but um if you want to quickly enable or disable it the shortcut is uh shift and r so as you can see right there i'm doing that right now you hold in shift and press r that either enables or disables it and um right after there so let's just say you enable your recording you know you get to the mic you do your recording da -da -da -da, you rap and whatnot and you don't like that recording right so there's our little recording you don't like that you can just press Control and Z. Oh no, wait, so I've messed that up. Let's just do that again. Um, my bad, my bad. Cool, you've done your recording, right? You haven't done anything at all. Just press Control and Z, and then you press OK, or you just press the enter key. So that's a really quick way to get rid of mistake takes, you know, it takes that kind of just um, are pieces of noise, or, you know, someone walks in or something, but it's a recording you don't want and you want to delete because obviously after a while, your project starts to look like a, a huge mess so um this is a nice way just to keep your project organized and whatnot um you know the next thing obviously is you know what i just did so let's just say okay cool you know you like that you stretch it out a bit and uh you just want to get rid of that you can just press Control z and then you can press Control alt z then you can press okay you know so that's a really nice way to do that um yeah delete last take etc etc the next thing is um, is a mixer move. So if you are mixing in FL Studio, right, and let's just say this channel 11, you want to, you know, you, you pull something down and you don't like it, you can actually, there's a way to enable um, the mixer, you know, to actually pass through the undo section or whatever it's called, because generally the undo section would only work for stuff in the playlist area or, you know, slight knob tweaks over here, for example. Control Z is, is undo university in any sort of app. But, um, you know, in FL, if you want the mixer to be enabled in that section or whatever it's called, you can go to general and then um, your undo history and then enable this little section over here, undo knob tweak. So now, you know, I think for every sort of knob in FL, you know, you can undo it. So control Z. And then obviously if you've done two moves and you want to get it back to the same, you can go with control Z, then control alt Z, and then get it back to that original. So yeah, that's pretty much the other one. Uh, what else do we have here? All right, so cool. So here's some navigation shortcuts. Um, you know, I use Pro Tools a lot, so navigating is really essential, um, you know, to getting to these small kind of places. So the first one that I've got right here is uh, Alt and Scroll. So if I hold in Alt and then I, I move the scroll wheel, so I don't know what, what you have. You've got, probably got one of those little things over there, um, but you can just press that and then you can vertically zoom in and out. So if you want to get like all your mixer tracks big, I prefer doing this then, for example, making one big because then what happens is um, you end up with one that's really too big, you know what I'm saying? And it's just a mission to have to go in and, and default it back to 100. So this is a nice way just to, for example, I wanted to, you know, make that main vocal big, I could just do that. And then you could zoom in um, like that. But now it's pretty annoying to have to go all the way up here to zoom, right? So what we can do is we can press control and then scroll wheel. So boom, and now we're zooming in. And it'll zoom into anywhere or zoom out anywhere that your mouse is centered over. So let's just say we wanted to get rid of that breath over there right where my arrow is. 
boom, you know what I mean? And then you could press the left and right key to kind of navigate in small increments. So yeah, that's really nice just to save time. Um, navigate around FL without actually touching anything. You know, sometimes you might, you know, just want to get to there and you might end up moving something or whatever. But, you know, my phone is locked, so that sucks. All right. Scroll wheel. Um, yeah, the next one is mixer size. Mixer sizing. So let's just turn that off. Um, my favorite mixer size is wide two. And the reason I like this one is because it's just big enough to, you know, be able to see everything, be able to see a nice, you know, the pan knobs and all that. But also the most important thing for me is I can see, you know, what level I'm at. So minus 9.7 is pretty easily visible. Um, obviously, you know, no one really has these massive sessions like this where you've got 70 mixer tracks. So wide two is just perfect enough. Generally projects that I've mixed, you know, 36 channels to 40 channels, let's say. Um, wide 3 is not that much different you know if you do have a smaller screen this works much better and yeah I mean this one I've never really liked because when you try and scroll left to right you know the, the cool thing here is I can scroll left to right with the scroll wheel you know and that just makes life much easier but this one is, is terrible because if I scroll you know all of these faders are moving up and down so that's kind of annoying you know what I mean so yeah this one works the best in my opinion um, yeah, the next one is another recording hack, which I've uh, noticed not a lot of people use. And that is to enable the countdown before recording, right? So basically what that means is just say you need to drop on the chorus. I'm off the... You know, um, and you want to start right there because it feels right. So you can just enable that, enable record. And then when you press the space bar, you've got a quick little roll in right there. So, you know, that's a nice little hack that uh, gives you a bit of time before you you know start recording the next one which really is important are these are using these tools but you know there's shortcuts to actually use these tools and you know always look at this panel right here because this really will you know show you a lot of info um but the most important thing for me is is being able to you know uh click on these different items without actually having to go and click on the knife tool so i know this off by heart by now but if you want to cut something right so let's use our shortcuts control scroll in and let's let's get rid of let's solo that we want to get rid of the um the breath right there you know so let's you know use our arrow keys to navigate up and down we want to get rid of this i'm of the i'm of i'm of for some reason let's just pretend that's a breath right so what i can do is i can hold it in uh i just press c and then look that boom i'm in the um the cut tool this is what it's called and or slice tool whatever you know but um one thing that I've noticed that a lot of people don't know, right, is this is a cool hack. So basically, if you only left clicking and, and dragging around, it sticks to grid. So obviously, if you turn it onto line, it's 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 still kind of on grid. I don't know if there is an option to. There we go. You know, but it's still on grid, right? It's still kind of. Oh, it's actually not. But if you, you know, I just like to stick to cell mode. What I what I do is I hold in. Um. Hmm. What is it? Yeah, I hold in Alt and then I can cut wherever I want so I can get really up close and personal to these points that I need to cut and then what you can do is you press P to get back to the pencil tool or draw tool and then another thing you can do to make a selection right you see how quickly I did that is you hold in control and then you left click drag and then delete boom and that's really quick right so we can undo and do that again right so we press the C which is for the slice tool we hold in alt we just drag you know we can even zoom in a bit more right so boom there we go make our cut and then we go p you know or you, or you could even just press control um left click and then press p again you know what i mean so yeah you know you'll, you'll get used to this over time this is obviously just a workflow thing you need to put in the hours to um get the feel of it and yeah another one which is cool is let's just say i've got two takes here but i don't want to um you know mute it like that what I can do is I can press T and then this gets me to the mute section, right? And then I can just left click and mute it and just press P to get back to my uh, pencil tool. You know what I mean? And another cool thing is if you feel like maybe, for example, you've got a vocal take that was a bit too far forward, you can actually hold in alt and then move it without, you know, it's snapping onto the grid. It's kind of moving per sample. So, um, you know, instead of it moving, okay, we are zoomed in pretty tight. So. You know what I mean? Instead of it moving like that, you know, that's pretty limiting, right? Because then you kind of snap to grid. You can just hold in alt and just kind of drag it. And I don't know what C does. Okay, C is obviously selection. So yeah, a lot of cool little hacks that we can do in FL. Whoops, I've minimized my notes. Um, 
faulty yeah and yeah that's really it um i've covered everything my fl hacks version one app that's really all i use with nfl hope you learned something um i will you know create little pauses in the video hopefully just to show you the um keyboard shortcuts so you can write them down or whatever and paste them next to your workstation or whatever but it is your boy fry long work day you know still putting out videos as always uh three videos a week i will try and do and yeah feel free to uh post any video ideas that you'd like to see in the future um feel free to purchase this template um selfie selfie whatever dot com slash by the producer it is your boy hit me up for mixing and all that peace <laughs>